Ah. Hi everybody, uh, John with you on my way to the post office this afternoon to mail a birthday card and a postcard. I know, I still actually mail things snail mail. Um, so it's time for another Hawaiian record update. I have enough new stuff to do another video to show you the things that I've gotten in the past couple of months. So, uh, like I said, I'm on my way to the post office. After that, I'm going to eat lunch, kind of a late lunch somewhere, not sure yet. And then it's a senior discount day, so I have to, I don't have to, but I'm going to um, Ross to in Waikiki to check out and see if there's a couple things I'm looking for. And today would be the day to get it. So let's go along on my journey today, but also look at the new uh, Hawaiian vinyl. By the way, there are wild chickens all over Waikiki now because of COVID, I guess. So I'm here with my coffee and my Tommy Bahama mug. Mm -hmm. My Tranquil Seas Woodwick candle burning, giving me that fireside sound. So we have fire by the ocean realness going on. And did you notice, well, you can't really see it, but um, my new tiki necklace, on this very nice long wooden chain. It's fabulous. I cannot even tell you how much I'm loving this. I have no idea where it comes from. I mean, I bought it from somebody in Canada. I have no idea where it comes from or anything about it, but it's big. See how big it is? And I am, I am loving it. Okay, let's do this. So let's check out some records. First, I got a couple records that were sent to me by my friend in the Netherlands. Thank you. There's several things coming up gradually from that package. But um, this is a well-known well -known artist, right? Rudy Wairata. I never know how to pronounce this group name though. Rudy Wairata and his Mena Moiria or Moiria or Moiria. I don't know. I don't even know what language that is. Rudy Wairata and his minstrels, beautiful Hawaii. <laughs> Now, um, this is Dureko label, it's sort of a European budget label. Rudy Wairada, um, great, great steel guitarist and spent uh, several years with the well-known uh, European Hawaiian group, the Kilima Hawaiians, who recorded for decades and decades and many, 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 like forever, really, from like the 30s or something through the 90s, I don't know. And well, and then he, of course, had his solo career as well. And this is from that. Beautiful songs on the steel guitar playing. Anything you see from Ru Rudy Wairata is going to be really great steel playing and really beautiful. Um, the singing is wonderful with his group as well. However, now this depends on, you know, you, your individual, you know, pet peeves or what bothers you or not. Um, they're great singers and great harmony, and I love it. I can totally enjoy it, but they absolutely massacre uh, the Hawaiian language on these songs. I mean, absolutely massacre. Uh, but I mean, hey, you know, they're in Holland and, and Europe and different places, so whatever. Rudy Guayabrata, uh, it doesn't bother me, but I, I know it would bother, I'm not Hawaiian either, so like it would bother some people. Um, Rudy, 
was from Indonesia originally and then emigrated to the Netherlands and had a very long career. Great stuff. Love, love the music. Another one from that package, which I was really happy to get because I've seen this many times, but never exactly knew what it was and never came across anybody who exactly knew what it was. Because if you see it, you're going to think maybe it's something that you might be familiar with, but it's not. The album is called Sounds of the Pacific. The group is the Waikiki Beach Boys, but but if you are familiar with some of the various Hawaiian groups, there is a well-known group out of England called the Waikiki Beach Boys. That would be, um, where are they? These guys are right here. This is, I just pulled a couple of their records, but um, they have quite a few number of albums called the Waikiki Beach Boys. They had American releases on Fiesta and then, um, various English UK releases. Um, kind of a well-known Hawaiian group there. Um, this is not that Waikiki Beach Boys. This is a budget label from Europe, um, West Side Records. Um, this one is, I believe, Dutch, a Dutch record, I think. Um, and you look at the track listings and you can figure, oh, it's not the English Waikiki Beach Boys. This is going to be like one of those Dutch Indonesian bands. And that's, that's what it is. Um, I'm going to say it's a step above some of uh, the, the Dutch Indonesian bands that I've I've heard that do all these sort of Kronk Jong songs that are lovely, but like um, these guys, there's some, actually some cute, thoughtful arrangements on here and some songs that I really loved. Particularly uh, the, the one song I want to talk about is, it's a mystery. Now you get these songs right a lot of times there's mistakes. The the labels obviously are like in Europe or whatever. They don't they don't know Indonesian or these other languages, and the group members sometimes don't know things right either. And so they there are like misspellings or things aren't really exactly translated right. And sometimes it can be a little difficult to track down an individual song if you're trying to find out what it actually is. And that was the case here. This last song, which they called uh, Tana. Iruku Indonesia, which translates to something like Indonesia is my homeland. Um, but that's not the song that's on here. That, that is not it. I mean, you start researching that song and you go, no, that's not the song that's on this record. Um, the song that's on this record, sometimes I've, I have a couple copies of it where it's called something like Malami, Bal, Mal, no, Malani Bal, Malambi or something, Malami Malambi or something like that. Uh, but that's apparently a misnomer also that apparently from what I've researched and tried to find out online that's not the right title either um, the right song not the right title what I could find and finally found many versions of is it's called Rayuan Pubu Kelapa which means soulless on coconut island and it's a crunk jock song just praising the beauties the physical beauties of the island of Indonesia very similar to sort of the Hapa Haole kind of Hawaiian songs that just talk about how beautiful the flowers are and everything's lovely and beautiful and love songs and all of that. Um, it's a beautiful song and I, I do like this version of it and was happy to be able to find out what it actually is called, Solace on Coconut Island. took a little bit of research. I don't mind telling you, trying to find out. By the way, 
I entered a contest on Wax Aesthetics channel. Tuco sent to, every, I didn't win, but to everybody that entered, he sent the most amazing little buttons. It was so amazing. Um, he obviously has a button machine. <laughs> and this made me think, gee, maybe I should make some of these, pay to, you know, have these made for like promotion because they're really cute. But um, the one I, I requested was um, Rink the Shrimp, the Rink, Rip the Shrink Off. I'm like that. I'm like, I find a record that's got shrink wrap on it. Like this puppy needs to be played. I don't care what, I know what people say, whatever. Uh, and then he sent ones for each of my radio station. And they're super, super cute. Hawaiian Hi-Fi and Moody Mood Music. I mean, they are just totally super cute. Thank you. I am loving these things. Um, next up is a CD. I think we're gonna run long today as far as the video goes, but I got lots of storage on my phone now, but I think this video is gonna run long. Um, this is a CD from Kumquat in, uh, I think it was in Australia, yeah, in Australia. I believe the gentleman, Bruce Clark, that had this label passed away. It was a very small, like private label sort of thing. I'm not sure how he got all the copyrights for all these things or if they even were or whatever copyrighted but he uh it's a lot of hawaiian polynesian music but like from the 20s from the 30s like the very early stuff 78s i have several cds uh from him that are uh wonderful and i saw this one online and wanted to go ahead and get it uh kumquat ones are probably worth uh snatching up because there aren't going to be any more made obviously and this one is by an artist that i have always loved uh, which is why i got it Johnny Pineapple and his native islanders, the Luque Vela Sessions. <laughs> Now, there were hardly any um, songs on this that I wasn't already familiar with, so it wasn't like, because um, I love to find like original compositions or new songs, and there was only a couple here or one here, one, a couple Kamehameha Rag and something else, Ami Hula Sway. So that was, that was great. They're great. But um, I've always loved Johnny Pineapple. And here, these are, what makes these so interesting is they are not commercial recordings, but they are uh, recordings of radio transcriptions. So these were performances that were made specifically for radio broadcasts and they were never released as commercial recordings that you could go out and buy. You could only hear them if you happened to catch a certain program where they were playing uh, these this music. And these were uh, not recorded under the Johnny Pineapple name. Now Johnny Pineapple's actual name was Johnny Kaunohi but he adopted the name Pineapple because for obvious reasons and it stuck and it's a great name. Um, but while he was recording these at the, this was when they were performing at the Roosevelt Hotel in the 1940s, I think. Um, they used a different name. His wife, according to these notes here, his wife, had suge Anita, suggested using the name Lukevela, which is a Hawaiianization of Roosevelt. Like if Hawaiians were trying to say Roosevelt, that's as close as they could come to saying it, Luke Vela, which is also how Christmas is, in case you don't know, all the people going around saying Mele Kaliki Maka and like, oh, I'm speaking Hawaiian. It's like, well, kind of, but you're actually, that's how Hawaiians would have said Merry Christmas. Um, that's the that's as close as they could come in their language was to say Mele Kaliki Maka. <laughs> so the Luke Vela Hawaiians, <laughs> the Roosevelt Hawaiians. And uh, this guy, uh, what's his name? Um, Bruce Clark. Yeah, he, um, 
says these are to him much more vibrant and much more interesting than his later recordings. Um, I, in my own humble opinion, beg to disagree. I love Johnny Pineapple's later stuff. That's what I came to know initially. Um, like this record, which I've loved all my life. That's Johnny Pineapple. Johnny Konohi right there. Um, I love his later stuff. I mean, like this, I, even just on this album, like Pretty Mermaid of the Southern Sea, Paradise Isle, Nakapuyo, Maui Chant. These are like some of my favorite recordings of these songs. Like I, they're, I love his later stuff, but this was nice too, but I'm just generally speaking, personally, not as much a fan of music from the twenties and thirties and into the forties. Like I, I'm more of in lined up with the, the thinking in some ways of a lot of the people in Hawaii, which is that they consider the 1950s, the golden era of Hawaiian music, not the 1920s and thirties. Um, I would go, you know, you know, but I love my SpongeBob SquarePants steel guitar music and all that, which goes even later than the fifties. So I'm, I'm all down with that. So it makes sense that this wouldn't be my favorite Johnny Pineapple music. But if you do like the, the 20s and 30s kind of 78 shellac sort of Hawaiian music, it's gold. It's good stuff. I mean, they're good. They're good. Yeah. Greetings from the archipelago of Aloha, Hawaii. I'm slightly bored, somewhat perturbed looking, because I've been here waiting and waiting for you to return to Hawaiian Hi-Fi Radio. The online radio station where you can hear thousands upon thousands of mesmerizing Hawaiian easy listening favorites. We're just waiting for you. Do you have any idea how many times I've been played while I'm waiting for you? Come back beyond the reef already, okay? I'm tired of standing here at the harbor looking at the red sails and the sunset. Please join me here on Hawaiian Hi-Fi Radio. The link is below in the description. TMI. I'm just talking too much. Okay, here's a record. I will confess, I will admit, straight up front, I bought it for the cover. I mean, I saw the cover and I'm like, okay, this one, I, it's like 20 something bucks, whatever, but I'm, I gotta have it. Gotta have it. It's gotta come home to Papa, this one. It's a group from Easter Island. I mean, check out this out called Tara, wait, called what? Tararaina, either Tararaina, 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 or Tararaina. I don't know if there would be an Okina in there or not. I'm not sure in about their language. <laughs> artwork on the back too. <laughs> That's the name of the group, Tararaina, and I don't know anything about them uh, on IRT Records. It's from 1972 and um, it's like a folkloric group. There are a lot of groups like this from Tahiti that sort of traveled around in the 70s and would put on shows. Um, apparent, I know that apparently there are some groups from Easter Island that did that also. Um, and this is like that. It's sort of a folkloric group. So it's not like you know, necessarily popular music that would have been played on their radio or, or their native music that would have been, you know, performed professionally so much. Um, it's more of a folkloric group. But um, this cover is everything. It's everything, right? Here's another old one, old school record um, that I got from an artist that I do like, and I do like his earlier stuff. We're talking about Ray Kinney here. This is actually a Japanese album, uh, number 10 in a series of, I don't know how many are in the series. Ray Kinney, Immortal Hawaiian Music Series, number 10. <laughs> Oh, 
That is Mr. Ray Kinney right there. It's all in Japanese, um, but I did get this one. I saw some of the other uh, Immortal Hawaiian series are on um, Discogs, and I do see some of them come up for sale occasionally. That's where I got this one. Um, but this is the second one I've gotten. The other one I have, a, I think it's Dick McIntyre. Yeah, Dick McIntyre or Alani McIntyre. It had a lot of songs I had not heard before, so I got that one. The other ones that I've seen all are, are rehashes of music that I already have, so I'm not interested in them. But this one, I only had one song that I had on another album. So these were all new songs to me by um, Ray Kinney. It's a nice album. I did enjoy it. I love the original songs, you know, Lullaby of the Palm, Dusky Polynesian. I mean, come on, how can you not love a song called Dusky Polynesian? Um, the Palm Tree Sing Aloha. Nice, nice album. Glad I got it. Happy to have it in the collection. I do love Ray Kinney. The Irish, he was the Irish Hawaiian tenor. And that is what he sounds like. And the, for real, the Irish Hawaiian tenor. And look, we've finally made it to the Waikiki post office. So I think I'm walking down to the um, yard house just down here. They have, um, there's usually a bit of a wait, but they have a really good happy hour that starts at two. So you can get a lot of their food at much cheaper than it normally is. So I think I'll do that today. <laughs> Finally, today we have an album I will say again also, it is a fairly rare thing for me to buy a record mainly because of the cover. It's very, I mean, for a dollar, yeah, I'll grab anything. But as far as like paying $20 or something for a record, because I love the cover, that's very unusual. But this is another case where that kind of happened because I knew the music on it was probably okay, but not going to be anything I was going to be super excited about. It turns out I actually do like the music on it better than I thought I would. And, uh, but the cover, I've seen this record like for the past 20 years. I've seen it off and on pop up in a few rare places. I'm usually very expensive, way out of what I would pay for a record. And I just, one of those things I thought, I don't know that I'll ever, ever see it over here. Um, but you know, of course, it would be a dream to pop up in a dollar bin, and it always could, but I really, really doubt that's ever going to happen. So this record um, is on Viking Records from New Zealand. And again, the cover is everything. The cover is, it is giving me a life, okay? It's called Hawaiian Fire by Tao Moy's Original Hawaiians. I mean, check it out. We got the little coconut fire dance going on. famous in Hawaii, but they are um, from Hawaii, Samoa and Hawaii. And 
um, they did, you know, live here. And then they started traveling as musicians, like in the 20s, and they never stopped. I mean, they just kept traveling and putting on shows for like 30, 40, 50 years. I mean, along like they, they and the Kalima Hawaiians are kind of like have been around forever. And they finally retired home to Hawaii, I think in the early 80s. And there's a record I have to get from them from that time period that's very expensive also that I want to find. But um, this one was done, I don't know, in the 60s, probably by Viking Records of New Zealand. Super happy to get that one. And you might recognize her maybe if you have several Hawaiian records. I can't remember her name. Is it Momo? Momo something? Is it Lei Momo something? I don't know. I don't remember. Shame on me. She was a dancer at uh, the Hawaiian Room in New York City at the Lexington Hotel. So she, those dancers are featured on some albums because they were conveniently located in New York. So they could do these photo shoots and things. But you may recognize her, particularly from this budget label, which shows up all the time and many people have, the Surfmen. This is her. Also, um... This is another one of her from the Marty Robbins. These are other dancers, I think also from the hotel. That's her. I like her. She has a very, and there are many, several others that I didn't pull out, but there are, she's on probably about seven or eight record albums. And uh, I love her. She has a very different look, I think. And this is so fetching. I mean, this is like so fetching. We are here for Hawaiian fire, okay? Yeah. So that's it. Uh, that's it's very long. I apologize for the length. <laughs> and we have arrived at the Yard House with their great happy hour, half off of all appetizers. So of course I ordered too much. Chicken lettuce wraps, onion tower, and fried cheese curds. Yes, I did. And a Diet Coke. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching. Please comment below and we will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to check out Hawaiian Hi-Fi Radio. The link is below.